Welcome back to 20 Clinical Pearls in 20 Days. We are now on day two where I say throw out your salivary cortisol test unless you do this thing. Now that's a bold statement, especially in this industry that loves their salivary cortisol test. Allow me to explain. There's a number of papers out there that suggest there is some pretty significant day-to-day -day variation when it comes to one's cortisol levels. It's called inter-individual coefficient variant or coefficient of variance. Now here's one such paper that says day-to-day -day variation in salivary cortisol. And what this did was it took 14 office workers and over the course of four consecutive weeks took daily salivary cortisol samples. Once when they woke up, 15 minutes later for the cortisol awakening response, and then once at bedtime. And then they posted, thankfully, this data. Now, I realize that table is a little bit too small to see, so let's blow up at least the awakening one. You can go look at the paper and check out the rest of the chart. So we're just going to talk about this first person here. We could talk about any of them because it's the same pattern. This person, person had an average... Uh, cortisol when they woke up of around eight nanomoles with a standard deviation of about four, but in the course of that four consecutive weeks had as high as almost 22 nanomoles and as low as 1.4. Now, depending on when you did the salivary cortisol test on this particular individual, and it was as high as this 22, you might say, well, gosh, you were really, really stressed out. But other times in that month, you'd say, man, you have adrenal insufficiency. This is so wildly inaccurate when it comes to day-to-day -day variations of cortisol. Multiple papers say this. Now, if you look at this from the standard deviation point of view, this individual, um, about 20 days out of the month, using this plus or minus four standard deviations, about 20 of the days would be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to 12. The rest of the time, statistically, would be even outside of that. It's not an accurate measurement. Now, notice what I said was, throw out your salivary cortisol test unless you do this. And that is buy more, run more of them on a person, buy five, and over the course of a couple of weeks, run them periodically. You will get a better, what's called trait-like characteristic of their cortisol levels, similar to this person's mean. This is this person, this eight, that's that person's cortisol over the course of the month. That's what you're interested in learning. And you want to get that average as much as you possibly can. Now, you're not going to run it for four consecutive weeks, but you can run five or six, according to the scientific literature, that's the suggestion that you need in order to get trait-like characteristics and not state or situational-like characteristics. If you like this kind of information, this came from a course called Laboratory Fundamentals. It is a part of our larger advanced mentorship program that you can learn more about by going to metabolicfitnesspro.com. I hope to see you there and God bless.